This is Megan Fox. She's a successful actress, model, and mother of two. This is also Megan Fox. She's also a mother of two. And she's a creationist who recently <clears throat> audited the Field Museum's Evolving Earth exhibit. Uh, this is a fantasy. This is a fantasy, like dragons. Like, like, except dragons aren't a fantasy. Like, but th their idea of, oh, well, dragons aren't real. No, this isn't real. This is something they've just made up. Incredible. Look at this. Though this emerging picture, emerging picture, you know why it says emerging picture? Because they have no evidence for it. No evidence for Australopithecus, you say? Like the fossils in front of you? This emerging picture can be controversial. Scientists agree on two key points. And they, and first of all, they don't agree on these points. Not at all. Humans evolved from a, an ape ancestor. There are plenty of scientists who don't believe that at all. Yeah, by plenty, you mean about 1% of all scientists in fields relevant to evolution. Cherry pick all you like, Megan. I can just as easily cherry pick historians who deny the Holocaust, physicists who think that the Earth is the center of the universe, and architects who think that the US government blew up the Twin Towers. In any large enough data set, you're going to find outliers. Every field has crackpots in it, and this is no exception. As far as minority opinions go in science, what separates the occasional genius who is right from crackpots who are wrong is a model's ability to make accurate predictions about future data. By this standard, creation scientists will always fail. There are gaps in the fossil record, and many fossils are fragmentary. Mm -hmm. And those gaps just happen to be the gaps that would prove this theory right. But because there are gaps, we're supposed to believe that everything they say is, 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 is right. We're just supposed to ignore the fact that there are gaps. It must be right. Frankly, I think the gaps are important, and you better fill in the gaps before you tell me to believe it, because I don't believe it without the gaps filled in, and there, there's huge gaps here. That's bullshit. Bullshit! Bullshit! Because the criteria required for fossilization to even take place are so specific and so difficult to achieve, the fossil record can be expected to represent only a minute fraction of everything that ever lived. This is why you're always going to have gaps in the fossil record, even if you find every fossil that exists. This image is a pretty good analogy for the current status of the fossil record. We know what the picture is supposed to look like even though we don't have all the pieces, which we'll never have. Despite that, an overabundance of transitional fossils, just between humans and ancient apes, have been found in the past 50 years, including the so-called missing link, whose cast is on the wall opposite to you. Go take a look, Megan. Really? Did you really just walk past Lucy? Do you even realize how important she is? That's the fucking Mona Lisa of paleontology, and you just walked right fucking past her! Only a creationist will rant about how there are no transitional fossils before silently passing, without any irony, one of the most compelling transitional forms in the world. You can't make this shit up. No one considers that Neanderthals could just be people with big foreheads. You know how Eastern Europeans have bigger brows and uh, you know, deeper set eyes. And um, we're supposed to believe that no, these are just these are ape ancestors. No, I don't think so. I think they're just uh, exactly like how human beings are so different. Humans are all so different from different places, and they look different. Neanderthal man simply could have been a guy they found with a really big forehead. <laughs> that doesn't prove anything. 
Let's ignore for the moment that no one claims that Neanderthal is ancestral to Homo sapien. The two share a common ancestor, but Neanderthals are definitely not human. But since you insisted that Neanderthals were just humans with big foreheads, I'm afforded the opportunity to have some fun with you. Let's ignore the volumes of evidence from comparative anatomy that show that Neanderthals are not human, and let's just look at their mitochondrial DNA. As luck would have it, in an extremely rare case where organic material is preserved for thousands of years, a Neanderthal's toe bone was removed from a Siberian cave and had its mitochondrial DNA analyzed by the Neanderthal Genome Project. In case you don't know, Megan, DNA can be used to determine how closely organisms are related. The most general rule, and the most simplified and dumbed-down summary of genetics possible, is this. The more DNA sequences you have in common with someone, the more closely you're related to them. This is an image from a peer-reviewed article published in Cell, which I'll link in the description. It depicts the amount of differences in base pairs between various groups. As you can clearly see, humans have the fewest differences in their DNA between one another, just as we expect. Percentage-wise, we can see that humans and chimps have more DNA in common than do humans and Neanderthals, meaning that chimpanzees are more human-like than Neanderthals were. Now, you said that Neanderthals are just people with big foreheads. So tell me, Megan, what does that make chimpanzees, since they're more human-like than Neanderthals are? Come on, Megan. Basic set theory. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. <laughs> Talk about shooting yourself in the foot, huh, lady? They have a skull on display that is clearly a dragon. There's no other way to describe it. It's a dragon skull. It's got horns, like here. It's got a long snout, big pointy teeth, um, bumps all over its face, bones. That, that, so you can imagine that the skin was stretched over this thing. It clearly looks like the dragons of drawings. Very clear. So, so... <laughs> My kids, when we get down there, and immediately one of them says, Mom, it's a dragon. And I look at it, and I say, my God, it is a dragon. I've never seen anything like that. It looks just like a dragon. It is. It's a dragon. And my mom says, it's a dragon. Look at this. Well, the, the technician goes, oh, no, 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 that's, that's not a dragon. No, no. I'm like, what? what do you mean it's not a dragon? She goes, no, that's a dinosaur. Okay, well... Yeah, but look at it. It looks like a, you know, we know what we're talking about, right? Like a dragon with horns and the whole deal. Meet Atrochichona acelti. It's a rare amphibian found in Brazil, but from the side, it looks a lot like a gentleman's sausage. Therefore, it's a penis, not an amphibian. It's a penis. I know what I'm talking about. It looks just like one. Therefore, it is one. Here's a penis pretending to be a vegetable. You can't hide from me, Mr. Penis. Here's a camel that also kind of looks like a penis. Maybe this isn't a camel then. Maybe it's actually a penis. Oh no, it's not a dragon. No. Yeah, you gotta dash the little hopes of my children, you know, because the, the imagination, they just, they can't have that. So then I ask her, well, what's it called? Now, this is the best part. What is it called? She says, Dracorus Hogwartsia. <laughs> you know what that means? The dragon of Hogwarts. The person who found this dinosaur got to name it, and they named it Dracorus Hogwartsia, the dragon of Hogwarts. The cover of Time magazine is sitting right next to this uh, skull. And the cover of Time magazine, they've put skin on it to make it look like... You know what the cover of Time magazine says? Dragons. <laughs> so the fact that the guy called it the dragon of Hogwarts means that it's a dragon? Does this also mean that Hogwarts is a real place? Well, sorry, but it isn't. Sorry to kill the hopes of your kids. Or maybe not. Maybe the reason you thought Hogwarts was an actual place is because you don't allow Harry Potter books into the house, in which case your children's dreams were dead before they even had any aspirations to live. But anyway, let's have a little more fun with this creationist logic. This is called a Komodo dragon. Therefore, it's a dragon. Just like this animal, the leafy sea dragon. This is called a Gila monster. Therefore, it's a monster. This is a pink fairy armadillo. Therefore, it's a pink fairy. This is called a chicken turtle. I'm not even kidding. It's really called that. Look it up. We can do this all day, Megan. Ice cream cone worm. Fried egg jellyfish. Hooters. Boobies. Tits. Get the picture yet? And it's the thing is, I mean, it looks just like a dragon. I mean, we have to ask ourselves, do we believe, I mean, 
there's no evidence yet of flying dragons, of you know, fire breathing dragons. However, there's plenty of, of people around the world throughout the ages who wrote these stories about dragons, who drew pictures of dragons, who said they saw dragons. And then we have this dragon skull that looks like exactly like a dragon that people have drawn from the stories. And yet here's this woman in a lab coat saying to me, that is not a dragon. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> And there have been many people who claim to have been abducted by aliens. If I look at old artwork and stories, I can impose my ideas of aliens wherever I want. So what? Look, you keep on this route, you're going to end up seeing a lot more lab coats in the future. Well, that's all I got. Her video goes on like this for about 30 minutes, but these were pretty much the highlights. I'll link her video in the description. Whoever makes the funniest informative rebuttal to any part of it will get a shout out. Have fun.